Now let's finish this project by creating the finished poster. The first thing we need to do is to manage our artwork and to group all of the things that make up the boat into one grouping. Let's open up our Layers panel, and you can see in the Layers panel that there's lots of sub-layers underneath the boat drawing. I can do this by opening up the boat drawing layer. If we was to click off to the right-hand side of any one of these, we could easily and quickly select just one of the objects, but to select all of them quickly, we can go up to Select All, and this will get everything that's inside of this layer. We can now go to Object and Group, and you can see everything's grouped into one grouping. Let's rename this group by double-clicking on it and call it Sailboat. This will just keep it easier to, uh, to select. With it all selected, let's go to Edit and Copy. And let's open up the other poster that was given to us. Let's go to File and Open. Find the poster.ai file that's inside of the folder with your name on it and say open and to be able to see the whole poster let's go to view and fit it to the window now we can go to edit and paste this will paste our sailboat right in the center of our frame what we want to do is to put the sailboat behind some of the other layers. If we look in our layers panel, here's our sailboat layer, and you can see there's a bunch of different waves that are behind it. Click on the sailboat layer and drag until it's below wave 6, so right here in between wave 6 and 7. When I let go, you can see in our artwork, now our sailboat's kind of sinking in the waves. So I can use my selection tool. Let's bring it up so that we can just see it going behind but peeking through some of those waves. That looks pretty good. We want the, the uh, bottom of our boat to still be behind a wave so it looks like it's in depth and in perspective for the artwork. This is a good point to save up this document. So let's go to File and Save. And we'll continue on now to the next part of the exercise. The next thing I want to do is to add a little splash to this very last wave. But in order to get to it, I need to lock down and remove visibility for some of these elements that are in the way. So the first thing we need to do is go back to our Layers palette and click on the second little box that's next to the eye icon for the date and time, and then drag down, and this will lock up all of the different layers. Now the layers I do want to work on is the Wave 8 layer, so I'm going to unlock that one. The next thing I want to do is to get the date and the uh, text that's off to the left-hand side out of the way. So I'm going to turn off visibility for both of those layers. This should leave you with something that looks like this once you're finished. Now let's use the Blob Brush tool to add the splash to the very back wave. To find the Blob Brush tool, find the paintbrush tool at the top of your toolbox and nested underneath it will be the blob brush. We need to open up the options for this tool so double click on the tool icon and inside of these options make sure keep selected is checked on and merge only with selection is checked off. We'll also keep our fidelity towards the center and everything else will stay at its default. We'll say OK. Now to use the blob brush tool, I'm going to zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. We want to start wherever the peak of this wave is and then go up and over, adding just a little splash to it. So I'm going to click and drag up. And if you do something that you don't like, you can always go to Edit and Undo or hit Command Z and then go back and redraw it. You can do this as many times as you want. Your splash doesn't have to look like mine or the book, so make it however you like it. With it still selected, you can add on to your painting. So if we wanted to, we can add a little bit more of a splash. You notice that it adds on to this. We can bend it around and add a little more, maybe a couple of flumes coming off of here. Whatever you want it to be. Mine usually winds up looking like a tree or something kind of grotesque, but that's okay too. Additionally, down towards the base, I'll zoom in so we can see it, we want to make sure that this fits the flow of 
the wave that we have. So I'm going to go back in and kind of repaint it until it matches up a little bit better with that one. I kind of like that. We'll zoom back out. Again, yours does not have to look exactly like mine. Yours can look better. Yours can look different. Just make it however you want your splash to look like. Once we're finished, this is a good saving spot. So let's go to File and Save, and then continue on with the next part of this exercise. Now let's combine the wave that we already have with the splash that we created. Notice that the splash that we drew was black and that the wave was blue. When we combine them, we want to make sure that we're going to get the same color. If you look in your Layers panel, you'll also see there's a variety of different paths at the very top of the sublayer. These are all the different paths that we use to draw off your splash. They are unlocked and you should also have wave number 8 unlocked. Click on the very first path that you created, then hold down Shift and click on the very last path. Now yours may have more or less than I have simply because your drawing may be different. But with all of them selected, this should select the entire splash that we created. Now we're going to move them below wave number 8. So hold down your mouse button and drag until it goes below wave 8. And when you release, this will put it behind that 8th wave. So it should be wave 8 and then all of the paths that make up your splash. Next, we need to open up our Pathfinder so we can join these together. Let's go to Window and choose Pathfinder. Here it is up here. I'll drag it down so we can see it. Then we can go to Select All. This will select everything from the wave to all of the splash. And within the Pathfinder, click the first one of Unite. This will combine and unite together all of the objects that we have. And you can see that our black wave is now combined with the wave in the, the back, and it's turned it blue. This is a good stopping point to save it, so let's go to File and Save again. And I'm going to close out my Pathfinder to get this out of the way. The final thing we need to do is to save our document as a PDF. Before we do, Let's go back to our layers and turn on the visibility for the date and the left side banner. Now we can go to File, down to Save As, and this will let us save it as a different version. First off, add your name to the document title. Next, make sure you're saving it in the folder with your name on it. And then down at the very bottom, under the format, change it from Adobe Illustrator to Adobe PDF. We can then hit Save, and this will bring up the Adobe uh, preset options. The book's going to have you review all of these options. Just know that you can change up things like how it's going to be saved and how it's going to be compatible. You can change up compression or how large your file size is. And you can turn on things like your crop marks and printer's marks. Later on, we'll be using these for a next project. Once you're finished, all you got to do is click Save PDF. And this PDF is what you're going to upload to the Moodle page once you're finished. Once you're done, you can close everything out, and this will finish up project number two.